My heart started racing. It felt as if my chest was about to explode. I didn't think I was capable of dealing with any more problems. I felt totally alone. Never in my worst nightmares did I expect this to happen to me. I know that I'm not a bad person and I didn't deserve what was happening. The text that I received on my phone turned my life upside down. Without having any explanation for what I found in the text, I was aware of only one thing. I had to find out who sent it. Imagine yourself in my shoes. In the middle of your own grief, you receive a WhatsApp message from an anonymous number, and in it is a recording of yourself acting mean. What would you do? The recording I got was of me threatening my mom of exposing her secret to my dad's family if she didn't do what I asked her for. But that wasn't the only thing in that message. The person who sent it also wrote, I'm going to share the recording with the whole world if you didn't confess the secret you and your mom are hiding. You see, the death of my father's mom caused lots of problems in our house. My father was devastated, but he did not act crazy as my mom did. She wasn't the same person anymore. After all, her death wasn't the end of the world, but mom acted like it was. My mom stopped going to work or to any other place. She also became really moody all the time. On the day the recording was made, both of us were alone at home. Final exams were right around the corner and I was trying to study, a task that became almost impossible with mom home. She entered my room without knocking and started screaming hysterically in my face, all because I dared to enter the house wearing my muddy sneakers. I have to admit, my reaction got out of control. It was the first time I screamed without stopping in my mom's face. I said some hurtful things to her, and I told her what a horrible mother she was faking being sad over my grandma's death. I didn't stop screaming until she left my room crying. The weird part was that neither I nor my mom recorded that video. You might be wondering if my mom and I were alone in the house. Who recorded it then? My suspicions were turning towards my brother. My relationship with him hasn't really ever been good. He has always claimed that I get everything I want and he doesn't. He thinks I'm my mom's favorite. I started to wonder, was he trying to turn my mom's attention toward him? Or maybe even worse than that, maybe he was trying to ruin my life. But I couldn't point the finger at him without being sure. I felt really afraid of replying to the message. So I was left with only one solution. I went directly to my friend Sam. When I got out of the house, I saw my father's car leaving the house. Anyway, he was kind of obsessed with computers and smartphones. So I thought that maybe he could figure out whose number it was that sent me the recording. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get a lead. Sam advised me against answering the text until he could find a solution. I agreed. I went back home hoping that Sam was able to help me sometime soon. I was stressed out, fearing that this person might have sent my friends that recording. While I was panicking, my brother Dean returned home. I went straight to him with my eyes burning from anger. Without a second thought, I told him, You think you can fool me with your games? I'm telling Dad that you're trying to mess with me. But before I could even finish, I got another text from that number saying, You lose all your femininity when you yell. Soon everyone will figure out how much of a mean girl you are. I'm still waiting for your confession. I was in total shock. I couldn't feel anything around me except for Dean shaking me and saying, Are you crazy? Get out of my room now! I started looking around me. Who sent me those texts? It couldn't be my brother. Dean was sitting right in front of me. I didn't see him holding his phone. It just couldn't be him. I ran like crazy all around the house, but I found no one. It was empty except for me, my brother, and my dad who was sitting in front of the TV. That night was the worst night of my life. I stayed up late, drowning in my own thoughts. Who was this person tormenting me? Sam called me in the morning and told me he was able to find out something very important and that he was waiting for me in his room. I went to his room right away. 
was able to record the calls that were made by that person and here was the real shocker. You won't believe who was doing this to me. It was the last person I would ever expect. It was my dad. But why dad? Sam told me that the conversation that he recorded was between my dad and his friend. In it, he told him that his plan had succeeded and that soon the secret will be exposed in front of everyone without telling it was her dad all along. Things became more logical now. My dad was always there when I got a text. He also blamed my mom for my grandma's death and wanted to teach her a lesson. But why did he get me involved in all this? Why is he acting so evil? I asked Sam to send me the recording, but he refused. He even refused to let me listen to it. He said he had deleted it in order to protect himself because hacking and recording people's phones is illegal. He left me with no proof to face my dad with. I left Sam's home not knowing what to do. Was I supposed to tell mom or Dean what I knew with everything that was already going on? As I walked toward my house, I saw an ambulance stopping right in front of it. I raced toward it and saw the worst thing ever. It was my mom. They were taking my mom to the hospital. I ran quickly toward them and asked Dean what's going on. He told me he found my mom collapsed. It must have been because of her depression, lack of sleep, and the fact that she was hardly eating. I followed her to the hospital, and my dad and Dean followed me later. My dad looked so worried about my mom, but was he sincere? I decided to keep quiet. Two hours after arriving at the hospital, the doctors allowed us to see my mom. She was really tired. I don't think her pale face was part of any kind of act. The doctor said that the exhaustion my mom was feeling was due to her sadness over my grandma's death. My dad held her hand as she slept. My thoughts were all mingled. Is he acting this way to look less suspicious? Why does he keep asking me to reveal the secret that he himself is related to in the first place? It was not only my mom's fault that my grandma died this way. It was his fault too. It just didn't make any sense. While I was drowning in my thoughts, my phone rang. I started receiving endless messages and many recordings of my own voice. Me screaming at Sam, me speaking on the phone, me ordering pizza, even me singing in the shower. Who on earth was still sending me these messages? I already knew it wasn't Dean. My mom was lying on the bed right in front of me, and my dad is sitting with us without his phone. So who could it be? I couldn't stop myself from replying to the messages anymore. Whoever was sending me these, I was certain it wasn't any members of my family. I texted back saying, who are you? And after a few seconds, they answered, I'm nobody, haha. -ha. I knew then that I had to play along. I texted back, fine, I know that you are my dad. You can't hide your identity anymore. I will not reveal to you the secret you are asking for. And I will tell everybody the real reason my grandma died. If you don't stop harassing me, I'm going to send the police to Sam's home so he can give them all the evidence we found against you on his computers. I'll give you one hour to think about it. I turned off my phone after that. In reality, I was never going to call the cops. But I learned this trick from the many movies I've watched. I wanted whoever was messing with me to feel threatened. For the next hour, I was counting the seconds so I could turn my phone back on and see my fake dad's response. During this time, I went straight back to Sam's home to tell him about my heroic act. But what was waiting for me was something I never expected. When I got to his house, his mom told me that he had been acting like a lunatic for the past hour. He had his bedroom door closed the entire time, but she had heard noises as if he was moving his furniture around or something. She left me and went to tell him that I was waiting for him in front of the door. In the meantime, I turned my phone on again. What I found was scarier than everything that happened so far. I didn't receive any new messages or any calls from that strange number. And when I tried sending him one, he never ended up receiving it. You might think that what's happening isn't something to be frightened from. You might even think that my threatening prevailed. But my story didn't end there. 
Sam had called me more than a hundred times during that past hour, and he had sent me like 20 messages telling me not to call the police or I would get him arrested. Then Sam came quickly to the front door. He shook my shoulders and asked me if I called the cops. I told him that I didn't and that it was just a trick, nothing more. I mean, I just tried doing what heroes do in those spy movies we watch. But how did Sam even know? He started to look less worried and then he said, Didn't I tell you that I'm keeping an eye on this number? I read your text. Then he slammed the door in my face without any further explanation. I spent that night watching my phone waiting to receive something, anything from that dreaded number, but there was absolutely nothing. That wasn't the only thing I was thinking about, however. Sam's irrational fear was also a mystery to me. At the end of the day, he was only trying to help, so why was he so afraid of the police? Meanwhile, my father texted me. This time, his name appeared on my phone screen. It's true, I wasn't really sure it was him who sent me those texts, but still, I was so scared of reading it. My heart was racing as I started reading. The text said that my mom took medicines and that she was getting better. He also told me that my mom has been blaming herself for the death of my grandma and that I made her feel so guilty by harshly talking to her. The truth is, she was not satisfied with grandma living by herself, but it was my dad who insisted on moving to another city since mom found a better job for her there, despite grandma refusing to move with them. No one knew about my grandmother's illness because she chose not to tell anyone. Her death was surprising to all of us. He said that I have to endure my mom's horrible mood and stand by her side instead of blaming her so we can all get through this. A whole week ended up passing and the strange number didn't contact me even once. I have to admit, I didn't think my threat would scare them this much. I was really confused. I couldn't find any explanation as to what was happening. During that week, however, life was getting better. Mom came back from the hospital and she was starting to get better. I finally returned to feeling the peace and quiet I had lost. But then, one day, something super weird happened. My friend Charlie told me that she and another girl who attend our school didn't want to go to school because they were feeling that they were being watched. Not only that, but someone was sending her threatening messages along with recordings of herself. Her parents told the police about it, and the cops advised her that she should remain at home until they catch the stalker, because this wasn't the first report they had about this stalker in the last three months. I couldn't believe my ears. Was it possible? Could it be that it wasn't just me after all? My dad came to pick me up when school ended, and I asked him to turn off his phone because I was going to tell him something really important. I also turned mine off just in case. I told him everything that happened since I started getting the very first text. He was worried and took me to the police station. After I gave my testimony, I noticed the detective asking me a lot about Sam. He asked questions about his age and the kind of devices he owns. They were worried about the fact that Sam didn't want me contacting the police. We returned home after the police told us that everything would be alright. But the officer asked us not to talk about the whole ordeal in front of any electronic devices. And that's exactly what we did. In the evening, we heard noises coming from Sam's house. I went outside to see what's going on. And there was the biggest surprise of all. The police were arresting Sam and confiscating all his computers and electronic devices. Yes, what you're thinking is true. Sam was sending all those creepy messages from the beginning. And not just to me, but to all the other girls too. The next day, the cops called us into the station along with all the other families who had faced the same harassment and threats. They told us that Sam had admitted to everything. Sam was watching those girls at school and getting close to them so they could be friends. Then he'd start sending those threats along with recordings he got by somehow hacking our phones. Sam was obsessed with computers and electronic devices, and he was doing it all for fun. He was just toying with us. It was all a silly game for him. He was truly living the role of the evil villain without giving a thought to the pain he was causing all those girls, including me. That totally explains his reaction.
Even though this has all been over for a while and Sam has been locked away, I still get scared sometimes that I'm being stalked by some stranger. And I never feel safe being close to my phone anymore. Hi, I'm Tanya. And for a while, my story was like a fairy tale gone wrong. My mom passed away when I was a kid. And my dad remarried right away. A mean, nasty woman with two daughters several years older than me. Sound familiar? Yeah. My life pretty much became Cinderella. My stepmom, Penny, hated me but loved her two daughters. She would spoil them rotten while treating me like dirt. She didn't care that they bullied me. She bullied me too. And my dad was at work so often that he didn't even seem to notice. My stepmom even started making me do housework. Horrible chores like scrubbing the toilets and taking out the trash. And she never made my stepsisters do anything. I was shocked by how a fairy tale written so many years ago could so accurately represent my life. Minus the part with the talking mice and the bluebirds coming to help me do chores. My best friend Stephanie tried to encourage me. She'd remind me that I only had to live at home until I was 18. Then I could go off to college and start a new life far away from my wicked stepmother and stepsisters. You have amazing grades, she said. You'll be able to go to any school you want. You could go somewhere across the country, across the world even. Stephanie was the only person keeping me sane as my stepmom continued to treat me cruelly while letting my stepsisters get away with murder. I told my dad about it once, but he just said that blending families was an adjustment. Give them a chance, he said. Your stepsisters have had a rough time since their father left. I'm sure Penny's trying to make it up to them by indulging them. I hated that he took their side. If I was Cinderella, then where was my fairy godmother? Where was my Prince Charming? I knew the answer. That stuff only happened in fairy tales. In reality, nobody rescued you from your awful life. Especially not princes. When guys asked me out, I told them I was too busy for a relationship. In reality, I was scared. How could I expect to have a good relationship when my home life was this bad? As high school wore on, I continued to get perfect grades. I did some volunteer work, which got me away from my house and bulked up my resume. Once it came to start applying for colleges, I thought I had a good shot at getting a scholarship. When I sent in my applications, I was so nervous I was shaking, but I was also excited. Soon, I'd be able to escape. I was so excited. I made the mistake of telling my stepmom what schools I'd applied for. She was angry I'd picked schools so far away. I didn't realize I had a responsibility to my family and should stay close to home so I could continue to help around the house on weekends. She said if any of those schools accepted me, I had to turn them down. I told her I was almost 18 and would go to college where I was. She called me a three and said it was a stick around? The day I got my acceptance letter to Brown was the happiest of my life. 
I'd received almost a full scholarship. I called Stephanie, and we both screamed with joy. I was finally getting out. But what about Dave? Then Dave called to tell me he'd been accepted there too. I guess we'll be seeing a lot of each other, he said. I was over the moon. Later, he texted that I should come over. He wanted to show me something. His parents weren't at home, and he decorated his living room with candles and strings of lights. It was a little messy, but I was still impressed. He said he wanted to dance with me to celebrate my incredible achievement. So he put on some music and we danced, laughing and trying not to bump into furniture. I realized I'd finally found my Prince Charming. Maybe this part of being Cinderella wasn't so bad.